Hello YouTube, welcome to part two of the machete. This took forever. And this what inch half why I can't tell you. We'll measure it later. Uh, that's just to get it straight, and then I went like a half inch to make my knife handle scales on the machete. And I wanted something old. This side of the scrap wood I got brought by the wood guy. And this is quarter sawn. Can you see how that curves? It's sawed from the outside of the log. So you get a nice straight grain. A few little worm holes. We want it to look old. That's why we picked this old wood. We didn't want to use nothing real new. I got some newer piece of 2 by 4 but I want something old. It's going to be oiled and slack. So let's up. You loosen this up. Now there's a metal piece back where it splits and goes on it to keep this tight in here. You gotta loosen this up. Bear with me. I have a video on this. You see that metal piece where it goes in there? You'll see it. See that? Now it was burning the dust. And I don't know if this is long enough. We haven't even measured, we just guessed. We want about five inches long, so let's go in and measure it and see if I did if I guessed right on this piece of wood if it's gonna be long enough. If I don't have to cut two. Okay, it's ten and a half. I guess it was at least ten. And we're gonna cut this, like I said, this is only three. We want to cut this out, see what the sharpie is. Yeah. Don't take, don't leave that stuff on there if you're going to paint. That's good blowing it. It's still there. We're going to make this four and a half. Enough to get my hand around it. Okay, I'll show you. See about where my hand is. I did this twice. It was the last of my gun blowing. It's not the greatest, but it is a tool. I did not want it painted. Uh... And it's not oil. When you oil, it'll glisten a little bit better. But rinsed it off. And you, boy, to have a reaction down here where the rust was still in there. It turned bluish green. So I did it once. I used acetone first, or you could use alcohol. You know, it was nice and spotless. Put it on once, rinse it off, rinse off the clear water, threw it on the wood stove, let it dry. So it's completely dry and did it again. And I let it set on there about, eh, about five minutes each layer. And it, it, I've tried that the longer you let it set. Don't let that stuff dry. It. It's just a, it's a mess. Get it off before it completely dries. But there you go. I'm thinking this will be wide enough. Two of these. Because you know we're going to shave a lot of this off. It's going to be curved over. So it will be centered on there. Uh, probably like putting the straightest part at the top. You know what I mean? And then it's going to be shaped. We're probably going to have to redrill a hole here somewhere. Two pins don't look like enough. And I got my carbide bit, so let's hope they go through this metal. So we'll, we'll find out. So stay tuned. Okay, we had to cut a little sliver off there. Like an eighth of an inch if I use the markings. Then that'll be on the top. And this bad spot will go towards the inside. So we don't really care about a few wormholes. You're going to see a few lines up and down where the saw. I'd have to pause because it'd get hard to push. And that's where you get them up and down wavy lines. Because it's really hard to saw through this. I used a Lennox heavy duty blade and it got hot. Okay, we're off to go cut this out. Then we're going to figure out. We're probably going to drill another hole about yay far in like this from here to this edge. We're going to go get this cut out. With the grinder di cutter disc. So we can start doing our measuring. We'll be back again when we get that done. Okay, we got one side epoxy and clamp. Use some sandpaper so we don't tear up the wood. What we'll do on this is we'll first drill a sixteenth of an inch hole in here as close to center as we can. That way we don't split the wood out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we will drill the quarter inch hole this direction. What we're going to use, since we don't have no brass in it, is just, just stainless tubing. We may put something on the inside. But it kind of bevels in when you cut it off, you know, with your cutter. See that? That's out the cutter. It'll work. That's all I got. It's, it's just a tool. It's not a show knife. 
So it'll be okay. And then I'll leave you, like I said, in the back. I'll have a hole to put a string on if you, I, don't know, I wouldn't want a lanyard, but uh, maybe to hang it up on a nail or something. So there you go. Just not to show any brand names. Somebody goes, well, why do you show it then? No, I don't get paid to show you this. That's probably why I have that saying. But, uh, that's what the wood looks like. Just some old pine board. But I like the grain. So I, I picked it the saw it so you'd have the grain like that. So it won't be like bookmarked, you know, like when you cut, you know what I mean if you look it up. They won't look exact on each side, but who's going to care? Who's going to notice? Let's just get this job done, right? I'm just starting out this season doing this stuff. It's going to be a nice machete when I'm done. So stay tuned. Okay, we drilled our one our one eighth inch hole there through this way, and then we came back and drilled this way. See, you don't get that tear out. Even some of this is going to be ground off. You don't want to splinter it real bad. I've done that before. I said the bad part's on the bottom. You see how much we're going to be quite a bit rounded over. We left it just above. See how it's above, so we got plenty to get it shaped, and it's pretty straight on the masking tape. That was on a disc sander. It kind of got burned a little dark, but I like that. It's dark colored. Okay, on with drilling the other side on. Okie dokie. I think you got it. And I think we'll do the same thing. I think we'll glue the other side and then drill a sixteenth of an inch hole going through. Uh, this side I just wanted to show you. A uh, quarter inch. We might drill almost all the way through. And then go real slow. We're just using a cordless drill. Don't use anything powerful. On the gluing this side on. And then we'll wait. It's probably been about 30 minutes. And then when this is done, it'll set overnight before I do any sanding on it. I want it to cure for 24 hours. So hang in there. We'll get this job done. Okay, this is set up good enough that we drilled our holes. See what you think of the hollow pins. I mean, we had a little bit of tear out, but the more you sand, the better it's going to get. And these holes weren't exactly lined up. These two original weren't really lined up. I know it looks odd, but uh, I used my cobalt bits and I just barely got through here. Because I took these holes from 3 16 to a quarter inch. I had to drill this one from the start. And if it wasn't that good a bit, I wanted to drill to the steel. The only other choice you have is to heat this up, let it cool down. And then you will have softer metal. See all this bad spot here. A lot of it's going to be, see how deep that is, is going to be taken with, off with the rasp. So we're on to do that. We're going to start shaping it a little bit. Uh, that won't be till probably tomorrow. Because I want this to cure overnight. So stay tuned for more. Okay, we're starting around the file over. Back here, this is squared. So we're going to take a metal file and get in there and, and put a corner on that before we screw something up. We should have done that before we put the wood on. We want a little rounded corner here. So we're going to use a metal file to get to the metal. You can see it sticking up right there. Okay, now I have this, but it's pretty rough on this soft old pine wood. It's old 4-in-1 rasp. You can buy these separate. This came in a kit. They work so good. It's kind of hard to show you how I do this, but I'll start by taking the corner off, and then I'll go up here, and I'll round over, and then I'll round over like this. You can kind of look down the end and see what you're doing. See that? So, that's what you're doing. So, it's your own preference how you want to do these handles. Now, this bottom is sticks down further than the metal, so we fill that full of epoxy. So, next we'll show that after we start graining on it. Pay no attention to the wind blowing the door open. It is windy out. Okay. This is probably an eighth of an inch thinner than the wood. And we wanted to handle that that big. So we're going to start. This is cured since last afternoon. So at 825. It's been cured. And this is where the wood was kind of old and doughy looking. So we're going to start on that. We'll bring you back when we get this filed a little bit so you can see what it look like. Looks like. I caught myself. I said, we got to remember to file those corners of the metal file. So we'll get to that. So hang in there. We'll get this done. Okay, we did use the bed grass to get the pox off. See where I'm starting to take the corner off? Once we get it to where I like it, I'll start rounding it over that way. And I'll start coming down this way. 
uh, and don't have to be exact what the top looks like. It's whatever feels good in your hand. So I think you can see what I'm doing here. Don't worry about that wormhole. It just adds character. There. Little short clips like this will kind of help you. Because I just don't like trying to film while I'm working because it takes a lot of work doing this brass work. So you, I don't think you'd want to watch that many minutes of me doing that. Okay, see how I'm rounding this over? We like doing this way first, then we'll do the side. Here's the side that had the metal. This is the epoxy. We can focus. You'll see the line where the epoxy is in here. It kind of looks dark like metal. Yeah, we'll do it like this and this, and then we'll do this. We want it all rounded over. We use various grits of sandpaper. This is that real rough body sandpaper. I cannot tell you the grit. But it works really good on Bondo and wood to rip it off really quick. Y'all know where I got this from, huh? We did use the wood rest, I think I said, on oh, getting the epoxy off. But Okay, let's get back to work. Do more grinding. See how this is kind of chipped right there? You won't really see that. I said this, I want this to look old. We're going to take the propane torch, kind of darken this. The grain. We want it to look like the handle is old and original. So if it has a wormhole or two, it doesn't matter. Because that's the look we're going for. Uh, along with the gun blowing. So it looks old. It doesn't look shiny polished. It looks like an old tool. Okay, back to work. Let's talk more work. Get a quick look at this side. Yeah, I'm going. And then you'll have these last corners. You can do that with this or with sandpaper. But see how I'm just bringing up to kind of match the look of this. Focus. There you go. I think you get the idea. These are so nice. See, you got curved and flat. Rough and fine. Got to get you one if you're going to play with the wood. Okay, we took the propane torch to it. We'll sand it. We'll be right back. You'll see that it'll look a little bit better. Okay, that's after sanding it. It kind of gets rid of the stuff that's too dark. We're going to put the pins in and we will shellac this with spray shellac. Because this will be used outdoors, so we don't want oil on it. There you go. Let's get this done. Okay, one last look before we go we'll spray some slack. We did take a lot of the burnt stuff off because we really didn't like it. Uh, we just super glued these in here, and then we had a little extra super glue. Then we just started sanding, and the, the sawdust kind of fills in the little defects. That's good enough for a tool. I've got it rounded. To where I like it. Fits good in my hand. So a little bit of epoxy left on top of the steel, but that ain't gonna hurt anything. You can tell that that's not steel, but okay, we're off the slack it. We'll be back, then we'll be done. We wrapped uh paper on her this time because that masking tape really stuck to the blade, so we're making it a little easier to unmask that. So we'll be right back. Okay, we are done. We put some linseed oil on the blade. We got a scratch on the other side. See where we never oiled it? That's what it looks like. We well, could always put more bluing on here someday, but it's going to wear. That is amber shellac, so it makes that nice color. So there you go. You want to get out the tripod. You can see the difference between an oiled and not oiled. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll leave you a couple more pictures. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of pictures at the end. I know we will.